Hey everybody, I'm back to tell you the cat story that I asked if you wanted to hear in my last video. And in my last video, um, and the one before that, if you want to find out why I'm wearing a mask, I'll let you know. I can't uncover my nose. I just ain't ready to reveal what happened to my neck yet. But anyway, um, here's the cat story. And this was about a year ago. This was before... Ricky started getting sick last year. Sometimes we foster cats, um, you know, and hold on to them so they can make room for them or have somebody that wants them. So last year there was this mama cat that needed looking after, and I said I would. And in my room, that's where I keep any new cats that we might get. And the only other cat allowed in my room is my possum. My possum Marie, y'all remember there's videos of them um, and everything from several years ago, but uh, possum has to be with me. So anyway, and she she gets along with the new mamas. So anyway, then Ricky got sick, and then of course I got sick, I almost you know didn't make it. And when I got out of the hospital, when I went in my room, I'm like, oh no. Because uh, she was about ready to have those babies. And I almost called and said, y'all going to have to come and get her. I just can't. But then I thought, you know, that infection, you know, went to my brain. Uh, we have found out by going to the eye doctor, it has damaged my right eye. I uh, picked up my new glasses yesterday. I don't have them on yet. See, I got to keep getting used to them. i uh, done a lot of things. And if you want me to tell the full story of everything that happened to me and everything that's going to happen to me, I'll, sh I'll tell it if you want to hear it in the next video. So just let me know. So anyway, I thought, you know, this might be good therapy for me. I'm having to walk on a cane. I'm having to get my, you know, balance again and uh, learn to talk good and everything. So this might be good therapy since I'm stuck in my room. So about a week later, she had the babies. So I'm living in my room. Uh, because everything in my house for a long time had to be totally wiped down every day, just the old, whole, you know, 10 yards and stuff. And Richard was kind of recu recuperating in here. And uh, y'all see Bo right there? He's the one of the originals too. And I'll tell you about this one right here in a minute. Um, but anyway, uh, they were so cute. And she was being a good mama. So, really, I didn't have to do nothing. Um, but when I walk through sometime, I'm like, man, our cats are eating a lot of feed. Like, I'm having to put out a lot of feed. And sometimes during the night when I come through, I'm like, I don't, this, this is not one of our cats. Ricky, we got some cats coming in somewhere. So, backtrack a little bit. Uh, last year, uh, we had noticed that this room right here is a carport that was built in before we bought the house. There was a pipe in this room. That's my crafting room. That's where I made candles and all. A pipe had a slow leak that went down into the basement in my son's room. And you start noticing things. So when they removed my son's bed, there was the evidence on the wall. It had leaked down through there. So anyway, a plumber had to come out, insurance and all that. So the plumber had to take the wall out. Uh, to fix the pipe and so we thought okay maybe there's some little way there's some cats getting in here so back to that um we had the kittens and i do think me and my neighbor do think now word has gotten out that we will rescue cats and take care of uh cats for the places and stuff and I think cats get dropped off at our house because during this time, some kittens showed up on our porch in a garbage bag. In a garbage bag. I walked outside and it almost, it like scared me to death. So anyway, I, I could give those away, but the ones in my room, I couldn't. They didn't belong to me, remember? I'm just fostering them. So, and they got... Uh, I gave most of those away except one, and it was the cutest little orange, furry kitten. And somebody had said that they wanted it, but they never came and got them. And I'll tell you, 
that story in a minute when the rescue place come to pick up them in my room. So anyway, them in my room was just so cute. And about two weeks after that, when I come in here, Ricky's like, Cricket, I hear kittens. And I'm like, it's probably the ones outside are in my room. Okay, okay, well, that, that's the case then. A couple of days later, when I was in here, I heard kittens too, and I'm like, no, that's kittens in here somewhere. So when I we pulled back the couch, there was 10 little bitty, teeny tiny, just born kittens, 10 of them. Uh, and the two mamas, they was, they must have been kin to each other or something, and they were very wild and very feral, and they went running. So I went and put on some gloves, uh, and we put them in a clothes basket. Well, them cats went wild. I was going to put them in the bathroom because I couldn't put them in my room until we could get the place here. Um, but they went crazy and was attacking and all. So we just put them back behind the couch, pushed the couch up against the wall. It's like, I called them. I'm like, well, guess what? <laughs> you know, so... They go, okay, just as long as they're not bothering you, just hold on to them, and when we come get these, we'll get the others. So, it, <laughs> and a few other times, you know, we'd come through, and I'm like, there's cats in here that do not belong to us. And it was getting crazy, and those two that had the babies back there, like I say, they were so wild. Like, they didn't bother us. But, I mean, any slight movements or anything, and they pretty much came up at night. That's why I was noticing food getting gone. Because at night, I would fill up the bowls with food. And, you know, by morning, the food still should be there, but it would be gone. Anyway, so, <laughs> I mean, this was crazy. And I'm like, oh, I just don't need this in my life right now. So, they get here, and they call, and they says, you know, we're just going to bring the van and a bunch of cages. So, when they got here, they noticed that orange cat on the porch. They says, what about this orange kitten? I says, well, somebody had done said they wanted it, but I haven't heard from them. I guess you can take it. And she goes, well, I already have it in the cage because they have someone wanting a kitten. And I'm like, no, take it. And they took those kittens from my room. Now, those kittens in my room had learned to climb up on the bed. And they would just sleep and cuddle with me. And they said I did a great job. They was friendly. They were not scared to be around people. And they said that's the perfect kittens that they can, you know, give to other people. Or, or whatever. Because, you know, they fix them and stuff. And you adopt them. And they was, it kind of broke my heart when I left. Because they were just so sweet. Um, so when we pulled back the couch to show them the other kittens for them to get. <laughs> there was two other mamas back there, but it wasn't the original two mamas. And I was like, these are not these kittens' mamas. And they go, and that's when I learned that other cats <clears throat> will steal kittens and stuff like that. So they got those two. I moved away because they knew what I was going through. I didn't need scratches from wild kittens and stuff and they just brought all kind of cages they were so many that they had to use my uh carriers so they got them uh caught but the two mamas from those kittens was so wild and so feral for a while they put the kittens in the cage they just went in and put all 10 of them in there um, and pulled out the canned cat food, and I just kind of stepped aside, and they got, the kittens were so good, they wouldn't meowing or anything, but they got one stirred up where it could meow, so the one mama came up, and they got her caught, but that other one just would not, and like, you know, an hour went by, and it just would not, so the other lady was, you know, catching cats, okay, which one is this one, which one is this one, you know, and um, I'm like, mine's fixed. They have the tattoo. So if you pick one up, just check for the tattoo, you know. So anyway, uh, they said, okay, 
Um, she's gone to wherever she went to. She's probably gotten out. Just if she comes back, call us. You know, yada, yada, yada. And so when they was walking out with some of the other cats, one of the cages wouldn't latch good. And so one of the mamas that was expecting got out. And they said, okay, she'll probably get back in your house too until y'all find where they're coming in at. Uh, just catch your collars and we'll come. And, and we did. Uh, so they go, and when that other cat, if you can catch her, you know, just let us know. So they'd be days, weeks go by, we wouldn't see her. And like I said, she didn't bother us, she didn't bother my cats. And my cat she didn't seem to mind because she was real sneaky and hit a lot and stuff. So anyway, I just told Richard, I was like, when we sell the house, I guess we'll just tell them there's a cat that's going to come with this house. So, um, the other day, no, it's been a few weeks ago, uh, my son had found some doggy beds for $5 each. Well, I buy them for my cat, so I said, get me about four of them. So I laid one right here. My camera, my phone is sitting on my little fireplace heater. And so I put it right here. I put one in my room for possum and a couple more out in the living room and stuff. And if you're wondering why Bo don't stay in my room, he don't want to stay in my room. He likes to be out here because they're real jealous of me. And out here he gets mommy love. And in my room, possum gets mommy love. So... The other day, I get up, and I come in here, and Richard says, Cricket, look. Now, remember, I just laid that bed out the night before. Right here. And this is where Richard sets in the morning uh, when he gets home from work. And I got up, come walking through. He goes, Cricket, come here. I got to show you something. When I come in here, there was four kittens laying in that bed, teeny tiny little kittens. And I'm like, who does those belong to? It was that cat that they couldn't get caught. <clears throat> that that we can't catch either. I mean, we, I tried to make her friendly. So, and we've just been ignoring her because there'd be weeks that we wouldn't see her. And two, we sometimes wonder with me and Richard being sick and in and out of the hospital, you know, people coming over, they might have let her in because we ain't had no more cats, you know, to get in. So, anyway... I was like, oh, no. So I did mess with those kittens. I mean, they, I put my scent on them, you know, was checking them out and stuff. But she never moved them. So now I've really been trying to work with her. Um, when I eat my sandwich, I've got her trained that if she comes up to me, she can take some of the meat out of my hand. Uh, but, but once my hand goes even forward a little bit, she's gone. But she's getting better. And so, and I try to keep it on a time schedule, too, with her training. And I was able the other day, she's getting close where she walked by me, and I was able to just run my hand down her back, but then she took off. So, uh, that was one of them. And there's two orange ones and a solid, and an almost solid white one down there. And they'll be picked up, too. But then there's... <laughs> It is crazy. I mean, it's crazy. And so, and then there's uh, three in my room. There was five from the place. <clears throat> and the mama kitten, the cat that was turned in, was so young. And so two of them didn't make it. And we figured out she wouldn't, she wasn't producing milk. And the little eyes were all infected and stuff. And they had little colds. Well, I knew how to deal with that. And I got the medicine for their eyes, the antibiotic drops and stuff. And um, <clears throat> one of them still just so tiny. And uh, we're guessing they're about four weeks old. Uh, and don't, they're not mine. But um, I'm having to bottle feed one. One of them's real strong. And it's a solid black one. And buddy, it'll latch right onto the bottle, but the other two, I mean, I mean, just tiny. Uh, they will not latch to a bottle at all, so I'm having to syringe feed them. And what's funny about that 
this possum stays in my room, and she don't like that mama cat. Now, if they get near each other, they will fight. But I've noticed that possum don't have babies, but possum has taken over being the mama for those babies. It's the weirdest things. I'll put them in their little bed, and the mama cat just won't stay in there. She won't, and I can't let her out. She wants out outside. But she's got to stay until they come and get them. Um, she's not a good mama. But Possum does everything for me, but she can't feed them. Uh, she cleans them and helps them do the bathroom thing. And all I do is feed them. And, but I do try to keep them off my bed. But Possum keeps putting them back on my bed. And that's a problem, and I don't know how to fix that. But anyway, I sleep most in here at night when Richard and Alex is at work through the night. So anyway, I mean, that's cute. It's kind of time-consuming because when them kittens, when I go in my room, here they come and climbing all over me and laying with me because, you know, I'm the one that gives them food. And uh, so anyway, and, and Possum, I think she's going to be heartbroken when they leave because she... Her not to be a mama is sure being a good mama. And I just wished I could get those other two. I'm going to continue to bottle feed them, and next week I think I'm going to start, because they won't even lick nothing out of a bowl or nothing. They don't even go toward the water or the food or anything. So they're still quite young. But anyway, that's the story of the cats, cats, and more cats. And, <clears throat> like, you aren't the same, the, the place... Like they pulled up in their van. I mean, there was so many. They was using my carrier crates and uh, just catching cats everywhere. So, a friend of mine who I actually got Possum and Bo and them from, she's having the same problem in her neighborhood. So, she's got me in touch with someone that's going to round up all these stray cats that's showing up in the neighborhood and everywhere and fights and there's wild chickens that somebody got in the neighborhood. It's crazy. And we got the catch cage on our porch um, to catch all of them so they can take them. And I think it's like a catch and release program. They'll fix them and bring them back. But at least I don't care if they're in the neighborhood, but if if they belong to other people, just get them fixed. So anyway, this video is long. I just seen, and I'm still learning how to upload videos on my phone. So I'm sorry this is long. If you want me to tell that other story of everything that, that did go on with me, because I didn't share everything, and I don't mind telling, just let me know. But thanks for all of your love and everything. And I'm on a hush, because this video is long. <laughs> Bye, y'all.